Hi, my name is Mr Barlow. Welcome to episode 25 of the VCE Biology Podcast. This episode covers part of Unit 3, Area of Study 1, and I'll be talking about cell structure, in particular the structure and function of the plasma membrane and various organelles. If you'd like to know more about any of the topics discussed, just click on the links that appear on the iTunes album art throughout the episode. This episode's about cells, and cells are the basic building blocks of living things. In an organism, cells are constantly being produced, normally via a process called mitosis, and cells are always dying, and they're dying via a process called apoptosis. So apoptosis is the programmed death of cells, so it's a natural feature of healthy tissue. In fully formed tissues, programmed cell death and cell reproduction are balanced, so you don't end up with too many cells or you don't end up with not enough cells. So you can see that if cells are constantly reproducing, but they never die, you're going to end up with way too many cells. You're going to have uncontrolled cellular growth, and that's cancer. So if you don't have apoptosis, it's bad. Similarly, too much apoptosis or too much cell death can lead to degenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease. Now, the signals initiating apoptosis can come from either inside the cell that needs to die or outside of a cell. And apoptosis, the process, involves you know, a whole bunch of things, but in particular some special enzymes called caspases, and they degrade proteins in the cell. Now there are two main types of cells. There are eukaryotic cells, which are more complicated than prokaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells are contained within a plasma membrane. They have membrane-bound organelles, which are little packages in them and they have a protein-based cytoskeleton, which kind of keeps the cell together. Prokaryotic cells are basically different in that, A, they're kind of simpler structures, but they also lack, importantly, membrane-bound organelles. Cells are surrounded by a plasma membrane, and the plasma membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer. Now, phospholipid is a type of fat. Bilayer means two layers, so the membrane is basically two layers of fat. And in this layer, proteins and glycoproteins, or carbohydrate protein molecules, protrude from it. So they're, they're mixed in with the fat. This whole structure is known as the fluid mosaic model, because it's, it's kind of fluid, but mosaic means it's, you know, there's a regular structure to the two layers of fat and the proteins poking out. On the outer surface of the plasma membrane, um, antigens protrude. And antigens are substances that enable the immune system to recognize self and non-self cells. And that means that the immune system can recognize a foreign cell and attack it and kill it and get rid of it from your body. Substances are always moving into and out of a cell. And to do that, they need to cross the plasma membrane. Now, the membrane is said to be partially permeable as it only allows some dissolved materials to cross it. So sometimes materials can cross it without expending any energy. Um, for example, diffusion is when substances just diffuse across the membrane, and those things are normally fat-soluble, and they move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So they, they move down what's called the concentration gradient. Sometimes substances can't just diffuse across the plasma membrane, and they need the assistance of protein channels. So they still go um, down the concentration gradient, but they go through a protein channel. That's called channel-mediated movement. There's another type of movement which is still with um, the concentration gradient, and that's carrier-mediated. So some sometimes substances need a specific molecule to help them get across the plasma membrane. But, but all three of those ways, diffusion, channel-mediated, and carrier-mediated, they're all no energy required, and they all go down the concentration gradient. But sometimes, molecules or substances need to go into or out of a cell against the concentration gradient. And so in these instances, energy is required. So one example of this is active transport. And this involves a carrier protein for each substance that is transported across the membrane. And there's also bulk transport of substances. So these involve um, transport vesicles, and the vesicles fuse with the, so they're like balls, but they fuse with the plasma membrane and, and a large amount of substances are either um, taken into the cell, and that's called endocytosis, or the transport vesicle fuses with the plasma membrane and a large amount of substance leaves the cell, and that's called exocytosis. 
Now eukaryotic cells have specialised subunits that have specific functions and are usually separately enclosed within their own membrane. They're called organelles and I want to talk about a few organelles. The first one I want to talk about is the control centre of the cell or the nucleus. So the nucleus contains the genetic material or DNA within a cell and the DNA is usually just dispersed within the nucleus. But during the process of cell reproduction or mitosis, the DNA becomes organised into a number of rod shaped chromosomes. Another organelle is the mitochondrion. Now mitochondria are basically the energy centres of the cell. So cells use the energy present in a compound called adenosine triphosphate or ATP. And ATP is produced during a reaction called cellular respiration. And in eukaryotic cells, most of cellular respiration occurs in the organelles known as mitochondria. So mitochondria, that's where aerobic respiration happens, that makes ATP, and that's how cells get their energy. Now cells make proteins by linking amino acids into polypeptides. And ribosomes are the organelles where protein production occurs. Ribosomes are not enclosed by a membrane, but many of them are attached to another organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum. The proteins produced by ribosomes on endoplasmic reticulum are transported to other parts of the cell or away from the cell, whereas proteins made by what's called free ribosomes, which are unattached to the endoplasmic reticulum, are for local use within the cell. So ribosomes basically make proteins, and ribosomes are made up of rRNA, or ribosomal RNA, and protein 2. Now when proteins need to be transported, two other organelles come into effect. So the endoplasmic reticulum transports proteins made by ribosomes within the cell and then in the Golgi apparatus, this is the second organelle, the proteins are packaged into secretory vesicles and then discharged from the cell via exocytosis. So there's the endoplasmic reticulum and then the Golgi apparatus. Another organelle is a lysosome. Now lysosomes are fluid filled sacs containing dissolved digestive enzymes. So they use their enzymes to destroy unwanted cell parts or damaged molecules. There are also peroxisomes. Now these contain enzymes that destroy toxic materials in particular, like hydrogen peroxide for example. A really important organelle not found in animal cells is the chloroplast. So chloroplasts are found in plant cells and in chloroplasts sunlight energy is converted into chemical energy by the process of photosynthesis. So chloroplasts have got chlorophyll in them, which is a green pigment, and all the enzymes necessary for photosynthesis to occur. Cells have also got an internal framework of protein, microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. And all these proteins basically supply strength and support for the cell. So the supporting structure is kind of like the framework of a house, and it's called the cytoskeleton. Now sometimes cells work as individuals, but more often than not, cells group together to form tissues and the tissue forms an organ. So when this happens, the cells need to be joined together somehow. And in animal cells, there's three different types of junctions. There's occluding junctions, communicating junctions, and anchoring junctions. So these all work to hold cells together. Now occluding junctions involve proteins which are embedded in the plasma membrane coming into contact with each other to hold the cells together. There's communicating junctions, and this consists of protein line pores or tunnels in the membranes of adjacent cells, and they permit the passage of small molecules, as well as electrical signals from one cell to the other, so through these kind of tunnels. The third one is anchoring junctions, and these are the most common form of joining of cells, and they're common in areas such as the skin, so they involve protein filaments, so the proteins connect the two cells together. Now plant cells are held together in a different way to animal cells. Plant cells are held together by a layer of what's called pectin, and this is a sticky polysaccharide, so that holds the two cell walls together. They've also got these tunnels, or microscopic channels, called plasma desmata, and these join the two plant cells together, but they also enable transport and communication between plant cells. And that brings episode 25 of the VCE Biology podcast to a close. I'm Mr. Barlow, and thanks for listening.